are these people? As I said, and, and as you know very well, we, we don't necessarily really like talking about electoral politics here in in indie land um in inn land um but what we do worry about are the journalists that are covering electoral politics because a lot of them are friends of ours um there are several of them in chicago right now that are covering the dnc we are not because that's just not what we choose to do but for those that do i want to make sure that they're safe and that they're not getting their asses kicked by the cops so I went to like the guy that talks about police accountability and when it comes to journalists, um, and that's Kevin Gastola, especially now that Julian Assange is free, right? Mm -hmm. So he put out this free post and he made the, all articles from his, uh, from his uh, publication, the dissenter.org free for this month so go subscribe there uh go hook him up if you can with a couple of bucks he's one of the best out there i always liked his writing and he's always straight up even if i again even if i disagree with him i still respect his perspective so he's wondering and speculating how chicago police will you know respond to dnc protests will impact reporters freedom and mm -hmm. so what's what's going to happen here so here's you know, a, right to jail, right away. Well, that's what we're worried about. Reporters covering DNC protests should be prepared for potential interference or attacks from Chicago police as they try to do their jobs. And I, I sent this to a couple of our friends, and I'm like, just, you know, be careful out there. Um, again, all exclusive articles are available to everyone in August. It will become exclusive, I'm guessing, once September comes. But he's saying that journalists from all over the U.S. and the world will be in Chicago next week for the DNC. Many reporters will cover rallies and demonstrations that city residents have organized for months, particularly against Israel's war on Gaza. I don't think that's much of a surprise. Chicago Police Department, which has a substantial record of violating First Amendment rights, is in charge of security. And there's been doc a documented increase in arrests and assaults of journalists, as well as damage to media equipment by police at anti-war protests. I don't think that's much of a surprise to anyone. Nope. A coalition led by legal organizations like the ACLU of Illinois and the National Lawyers Guild of Chicago wrote a letter to CPD uh, to the Chicago Police Superintendent Larry Snelling and Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson, who interestingly enough came out today or yesterday and finally acknowledged that it's a genocide that's happening there. Thanks. Okay. But a Democratic a mayor, well, a lot late, but in time and just in time for the DNC to happen in his city. They demanded that the city respect right. people's rights to speech and assembly during the DNC. Well, you know, we don't want a repeat of and this is what I thought was funny. You know, they decided to list all the different times when Chicago police beat the crap out of people publicly at demonstrations, and they had plenty to go with. The DNC from 1968. Well, famously, there's a pretty famous one, right? Yeah, 1968, that one. 1968, yep. But then you also had the anti-Iraq war protest of March 20th of 2003 and the 2012 NATO summit through and throughout the 2020 summer of demonstrations in support of Black Lives and George Floyd, you know, in the wake of George Floyd. Um, so the coalition recalled that during the last eight months, CPD officers have targeted people protesting for a ceasefire and justice in Palestine with violence, verbal harassment, and unnecessary arrests. Well, yeah. I don't stand for that. Yeah, I know. We, we don't, but we kind of, that's what they've been doing. Seth Stern and Jimenza Pinzone of Freedom of the Press Foundation authored an op-ed for the Chicago Sun-Times that urged police to allow journalists covering DNC protests to do their jobs freely and safely, even if, and especially if, things get out of hand. Because we know that they do that regularly, right? Like, okay. Yep. So, so Kevin himself says, based in the Chicagoland area, he'll be on the ground throughout next week 
to chronicle and track the impact that policing has on freedom of the press during the DNC. Are they going to herd everybody into a pen and not allow them to interview people and cover and do everything? Um, yep. Desert Mantis letting us know protests are already underway, and that's not a surprise. All right. Um, and haven't they already been uh, surrounding the convention? They have. Uh, that's that's already started to happen. Golden Monarch. So thousands of CPD will deploy along with officers from Milwaukee and various departments in the state of Illinois. Yeah, they're staffing up. Supporting police departments will likely defer to CPD leadership with more experience handling protests. Also within their own city, that note city, the buildings, the the business owners, etc. Um. Have you talked to people that are going to, to... Oh, you're in the middle of... That. Okay, Snelling has reinforced fears that Agita... Oh, okay, you're back. <laughs> Have I talked to anyone? That's going to no. Chicago? No, you I haven't mean, talked kind to of. a human being ever. Like <laughs> well, Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. You know? I mean, I tell... I ask them why. Why? Why would you want to go to that? You know? Yeah, but we had to cover that. No, we don't. <laughs> like, plenty of people will do that. Right. You know? Well, we, we want to talk to the people like, outside. We just want to be there no, for you... if it's 1968 again. Well, yeah, but. That's all you want. You don't want to be there if it's 1968 <laughs> again, though. That's the thing. Like, you do, but I... you kind of don't. Like, do I, do I get to bring modern stuff back to 1968 or. What, oh, what you a know? freeze. What a freeze no? on Reese laugh. That's great. Ah, uh, what happened? <laughs> why did it? Why? Why, Bobcat? And... Oh, dude, I need to. Oh, that was great. Okay. <laughs> I'll fix it. Jesus so, Christ. Snelling has reinforced fears that outside agitators will come to Chicago to destroy the city. At an August 12th event attended by local business executives and elected officials, he said to widespread applause, we're not going to allow you to riot. Nobody was planning on rioting. They want to march peacefully. They want to make their voice heard. They want to try to make effect change and let people know how pissed off we really are. That's what they want to do. But not throw things through bricks. That's what feds do in order to instigate and say that there was violence. Well, protesting and rioting are two different things. Yes, they are. The moment that starts, we're going to intervene. I'm not going to wait until it gets out of control and then try to bring it back in, he insisted. Okay, thanks. In other words, the police plan to try to predict whether a peaceful protest may become a riot. Yes, we're getting pre-crime, folks. Okay, reporters should worry about instances when police commanders declare an assembly is a riot especially before any violence or criminal act has been committed. Officers will disperse everyone and press who exercise their right to record or observe the actions of police in order to inform the public uh, will likely face attacks or interference. Yeah, look for those rubber bullets, especially if you're filming. But I believe you made something called Film the Fuzz a long time ago. I remember that. Um, uh, yep. I did. But while discussing the um, planned security response for the DNC, Snelling has invoked the rebellions that unfolded in Chicago in 2020 against policing following the murder of George Floyd by Minneapolis police. You know, we talked about that. His inaccurate yeah. characterization paints civil rights protests of the summer with a broad brush, treating them mostly as riots without acknowledging the well-known role that the CPD played in sparking violence. Oh, yeah, they were just innocent yep. bystanders, right? Snelling claims that police are more prepared for mass Man. gatherings. Yes, he's the he's the, the police commissioner, right? They were more prepared for mm -hmm. mass gatherings than they were in 2020. However, a May 2024 report from the city of Chicago's OIG that's the Office of Inspector General, found that the CPD trainings on for field force operations and First Amendment considerations still involve outdated tactics and vague descriptions of the limits against particularly es escalatory tactics. So 
field they're, force operations. They're not being taught and and, and you know uh, you know de-escalation tactics are not being pushed and pushed for. The fact that they're there at all is escalation. I mean, it, partially, you know, so... Sure. Like, right. and you know they're bringing in cops from outside the city to come in. All that yeah. stuff is happening. Yep. Well, that's so, what they're doing. They, they, they said that. But specifically, CPD training materials relied on outdated and inaccurate uh, psychological theories to instruct members that crowds negatively affect individual participants... Encouraging violent be o behavior. Um, OIG further found that CPD draft policy allows for use of crowd control tactics, which have both in Chicago and other cities been used indiscriminately without distinguishing between peaceful demonstrators and individuals conducting criminal acts. That's because everybody's a criminal yeah. in their minds. So they only have, yeah. you know, kind of one. I thought, I thought this was you know, one speed. But again, according to the Office of the Inspector General from Chicago Police Department, a draft policy lacked clear limitations on these tactics. I don't think that's surprising. They emphasized that by generalizing mass event participants' capacity for violence while also teaching tactics that may be used indiscriminately against demonstrators and those committing criminal acts alike, DPD's guidance may contribute the risks of escalating tensions and violations of constitutional rights. I don't think it's a may. I think it's a likely will. All right. Right. So Freedom of the Press Foundation's U.S. Freedom Tracker recorded several incidents in Chicago during the nationwide uprising. Uh, on, on May 30th of 2020, freelance journalist Jonathan Ballou was sprayed with a chemical agent while reporting on a protest. He sued the, the city of Chicago and got a $40,000 settlement on October 23rd. So not only mm. is this bad policy, it's also costing the city money. Then you've got two other incidents uh, occurring on August 15th as protests against policing continued. Freelance photographer Dominic Gwynn told the tracker that an officer tried to tug him off a flower bed that had a wet concrete surface. After the officer let him go, another officer assaulted him as he tried to take pictures of a woman who police dragged and arrested. Yeah, they don't like it when you film what they're doing, for sure. Yeah. All right. Then you've got independent journalist Raven Geary according to the tracker, was subjected to an unauthorized police search of her backpack that same day. Police kettled protesters, and that's what I was talking about. Are they going to do that with reporters? Make it impossible yeah. for them to leave. She was wearing a black helmet with bright green tape marked press and identified herself as press several times, yet an officer took her backpack and emptied its contents. They don't care. Yeah, right? that's a target. Yep. Same thing with those blue vests in Palestine. Yeah. You know? Chicago police engaged in, so, in attacks on the press in 2020. We, all, again, well documented when there were protests calling for the removal of a Christopher Columbus statue in Chicago's downtown Grand, in, in downtown Chicago's Grand Park. And police reportedly assaulted the same reporter, Helen Boyle of Block Club Chicago, again, when he was reporting on protests after Chicago police killed a 13-year-old Latino-American boy named Adam Toledo. And there are too many of those. And then, you know, finally he's got that Snelling is fond of holding up the NATO summit in May 2012 as an example of how police can appropriately respond to protests. But as Mr. Gastola Kevin here reported, Again, any media word honoree, the police and local media manufactured this hey manufactured this consensus and ignored the extent to which the city suppressed freedom of speech, denied permits for marches, and passed restrictive ordinances to make assemblies more difficult. That's what he's proud of, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Yep. CPD also <laughs> used an informant to entrap three activists, the NATO three 
who were charged and later acquitted of state terrorism offenses, but that wasn't the whole point. They were disappeared and taken to the Homan Square black site that police operated in violation of arrestees' constitutional rights. That's where Jesse Jett shot his album cover. there will be zero pushback on that. Nope. So. Nope. But that's that's the black site know. that they took Jesse to, to to record live from the black site. <laughs> um, uh-huh. The warnings of activists, attorneys, and legal organizations in Chicago who remember this history all too well reasonably demand that the city of Chicago stop systematic violations of rights from occurring again. Yeah. <laughs> That's like <a> saying that <laughs> yeah, a daily like they're will, going to. That, that a daily is never going to be elected mayor again. I mean, we can ask for it, but it's probably going to happen. Right? And we'll if probably put Lori Lightfoot's fourth clone in or something you know but as he says if or when police uh, trample on the first amendment there will be protesters and members of the press will. from all over the u.s to challenge their actions and if you know of or hear of any r- information related to journalist arrests or harassment during the dnc email kevin at newsletter at the dissenter.org right there um so definitely hook up our buddy Kevin Gostola at the Dissenter. He's another independent journalist that kind of goes at it alone. He does a podcast called Unauthorized Disclosure with Rania Kalik. And as I said, he is an Indie Media Award honoree. And uh, I've been working with the Z- Hey, how about that? I've been working with the Zago Brothers. And uh, check this out. This is Kevin's they go ahead first time anybody's seen it check that out Kevin got i don't stole. know if that's what you should call it his they go heads <laughs> yeah i don't think that's the no. right choice well if you want to support independent media no. and support independent art the money for all that, that we raise this month and and for the next couple of, for, for the next bit is going to be going towards Zago brothers to uh to support his independent art for the uh the the 2024 indie media awards and we're having this made for all the honorees that we can possibly have it made for um i'm excited for that can't wait and that's going to be coming in about eight ten weeks or so i'm guessing support independent media because we do need it more than ever i i keep saying it every week and I really appreciate the people that do. And if you can't, you know, actually donate, share, and and get more people listening to this because we're all put in a in a bubble and it's so hard to break out of. So anybody you can tell about it, your neighbor, the person at the coffee shop, anyone, man, support independent media and help us grow. Thanks, everyone. Night. Keep listening to what little boats have to tell you. Good night, fam. See you in a bit. Ciao, oh, baby. Mwah. Ciao, baby. No! We just fucking lost the stream!